Hello everyone and welcome back to this rather glorious February day. It's like spring has finally arrived. So I think it's time that I go through my plans with you all for the year ahead. So I'll be going through the overall layout, all the seed varieties which I've chosen and just my general plans for the allotment in 2019. Hello everyone and welcome to the planning video of 2019. I'm so super excited for the year ahead and on a day like today, I mean the sun is shining, it actually feels like spring is here. It's the middle of February and um, at this time last year we had snow right at the end of February, at the beginning of March and it was really heavy snow. So I don't think we're going to get any snow that late this year um, because yeah it just feels like spring is here. All the daffodils and the tulips are popping up. There's crocus in bloom. Just feels like spring. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited for the year ahead. Um, and I have gone a little bit overboard with the planning yet again. Um, if some of you have watched my previous videos or been following me for the past five years, then you know that I like to draw lots of plans out. Um, and this year is no exception. I think I've drawn about nine plans out. Um, but what I will quickly just say is that I will be popping a post on the blog as well with all the varieties of all the seeds that I'm growing and detailed pictures of all my plans. So if I go over things too quickly here, then you can head over to the blog and have a good look there. Because I said to myself this morning, I'm not going to talk so much. Because I think last year I did two videos where I focused on the flowers on one video and then the vegetables in the other video, but I still talked too much. Um, and I know it's a little bit boring just watching someone talking on the screen. Um, so yeah, I'll try and keep this nice and quick. So I've had my allotment for five years now. Nothing is going to change now. The layout is going to stay exactly the same. Um, I think after the first year you know after you first get your allotment and you decide on the layout nothing tends to change there are little things little areas that you can tweak like i tweaked my flower patch and i've also tweaked the area to the side of my shed here but this year the layout is staying exactly the same which is great so i can actually focus on what i'm growing and you know making established areas um so let's get on to the layout my allotment is roughly 12 meters by seven meters so it's quite small um i don't know why i've drawn so many plans out for such a small space <laughs> but we'll just quickly go over the layout so i have three vegetable beds which have a crop rotation so there's the potato bed the brassica bed and the legumes slash other bed there's also a fruit cage a wildlife patch, my shed with a water tank next door. Then there's also the area which I like to call the nutrient zone and that has my manure bin, my comfrey and also has rhubarb, chamomile and sunflowers in there. Then there's the trough and my flower patch and then walking into the allotment in the main entrance are three archways and that's my allotment. Um, like I said, it's small, but it fits a lot in. You will be surprised how much you can fit into a small space. So with my plans, this year I have drawn a pretty version, which I've colored in. So that's just the entire allotment there. But what I do every year is I use graph paper so I can get the exact me measurements on the plot. I'm not sure if you can see these properly. So that's the graph paper. So that's the main allotment. Let's go on to the vegetables first, I think. If I can find that plan amongst all my plans. <laughs> 
but yeah like i said before nothing's really changing this year um i suppose once you've had your plot for five years you tend to get to know what grows well um or what you like uh, there are a few little things which i am trying differently this year um but not much is changing so in the potato bed um it's meant to be the root bed but because my vegetable beds are only um, three meters by 2.5 meters they're not very big so i can only fit four rows of potatoes in my root bed so i just call that the potato bed for the past five years i've been growing international kidney um, otherwise known as jersey royals and they're really really nice but i've noticed that i haven't been getting a huge crop from them so this year i decided to try a different variety actually two different varieties so i'll be growing two rows of charlotte and two rows of red duke of york now i tend to grow the salad or the first earlies because my dad has a larger allotment he grows a lot more potatoes and he focuses on the main crop potatoes so i just grow the sort of salad ones which is quite nice because i really really like them so that's the potato bed and then we have the brassica bed now in there i'm growing my purple sprouting brussels sprouts cauliflower kale red cabbage and coal rabi and i'm just growing one row of each of them um because yet again the beds are so small i'm just gonna grow a bit of everything um sometimes you can grow too much of something and you're a little bit overwhelmed with it so I tend to just grow one row of, of my brassicas. Um, should I go through the varieties as I go along? I think I better, haven't I? So my purple sprouting, this year I'm going to try early purple sprouting because I have purple sprouting in there now, but it's not going to be ready to harvest until April, which is quite late really. So I thought I'd try an early variety. The Brussels sprouts I'm giving Evesham special a go this year. Last year I grew um, proper Brussels sprouts for the first time and they were the Brody variety. Um, they didn't grow very big at all um, but I thought I'd give them a another go so I'm going to grow the Evesham special variety. Previous years I've grown Colette's um, or flower sprouts and they've been really really good but now my dad grows them and I just think there's no point both of us growing them. A cauliflower Last year was a complete disaster, I didn't get any. So I'm gonna give them another go as well. And I'm going to grow um, all year round variety. Kale is gonna be Cavallo Nero, Nero di Toscana. Lovely, lovely variety. I usually grow the curly ones, but um, again, just thought I'd change the variety for a little bit, you know, for a change. Red cabbage, like always, red drum head. I love red cabbage and I always like to pickle it. It's so, so nice. Um, and then for a bit of a change, kohlrabi. Delicacy purple. Never tried kohlrabi, ever. I tried growing it um, in the second growing season, not last year, the year before, um, and it didn't grow. Um, and I just, I want to try it. I just want to try it. So I thought, I'm going to try it. Why not? So that's the brassica bed. Now in the legumes slash other, um, it's a bit of a mix. <laughs> I didn't want a bed full of beans, basically. So there's going to be my block of sweet corn with blotty beans growing up them. There's gonna be two courgettes, two squashes, a pumpkin, three rows of carrots, and two wigwams with soya beans growing up them um, and again there's a few new things in there which i'm really really excited about and then there's the obviously staple ones like carrots and sweet corn um, and courgettes are one of my favorite things to grow so the varieties of these the sweet corn is going to be mini pop again and this year I'm going to pick them on time when they're actually small because <laughs> last year I left it too late so then I just picked them um, and had them as popcorn um, but you're meant to pick them when they're small so I'm determined to pick them when they're small this year. The Bellotti bean is the lingu Lingua di Forca if I say that right I don't know. Um, I grow this one every year I love Bellotti beans so much. 
Um, courgette is going to be costata romanesco. Oh, really rubbish at saying these names. Um, and I'm also trying a climbing variety this year called Shooting Star, which I'm so excited about. So that's going to be growing up, up a wigwam as well. Then there's the pumpkin, which is Tom Fox, which is a smaller variety. I didn't like harvesting really big ones last year. They're just, they're too big. I can't handle them. <laughs> and then they're two, the two squashes are going to be Crown Prince. And oh, I'm not going to be able to say this one. Get Galiax DI scenes. I'm not saying that right at all, so I'll pop it up on the screen. <laughs> um, and the carrots are going to be Romance, which I grow every year as well, but they're usually really, really good. Um, so the soya beans are just uh, Adaman beans, and they are Fis Fiscaby V variety. Again, something I've never grown before, um, but I'm so excited to grow them and i'm going to have two wigwams with them growing up um next are the archways and oh, they haven't been doing that great for the past couple of years so this year i've um mulched them with lakeland gold from dalefoot composts um and i'm just going to feed them with nutrients because yet again i'm going to be growing munchkin pumpkins up there sweet peas and climbing french beans cobra climbing french beans um but yeah the past couple of years hasn't been great so i really really want a good crop from them this year so i'm going to try and just add loads of nutrients into that um where else are we oh yeah so there's the radish tank as well um and i've got a couple of new varieties of radish to try out they are called watermelon and pink beauty so excited so excited i love radish i could eat it all day every day especially with cheese it's so so nice um so in my radish tank i can sow four rows but i'm going to sow them successionally so i'm not you know inundated with radish so i'll probably sow the first row and then two weeks later sow the second row two weeks later and so on um so any more vegetables Do -do -do. In the spring trough, so once all the spring flowers, uh, spring bulbs have died back, I'm going to plant out a butternut squash again <laughs> and also a gherkin. So the butternut squash is hunter and the gherkin is national... Why haven't I written that one down? Oh, I have national pickling, which is a new variety for me. Um, I forgot to plant out a gherkin last year so I grew cucamelons which I'm really sad about not growing again this year but I don't have room for them and I really really missed having my pickled gherkins um so yeah the butternut squash and the gherkin are going to go in there I'm also going to plant out some chamomile around them as well and see if that works because I'm trying to squeeze in as much chamomile as possible into my plot this year because uh, I just love chamomile tea um there's also three rhubarb um in the nutrient zone <laughs> i don't know what else to call it sounds like such a geeky name um yeah there's three rhubarb and yet again i'm going to be growing chamomile around them there's also some asparagus in the flower patch and i've got uh two new crowns to plant out in there as well they just grow amongst the flowers i just leave them to it um, and last year I got my first, was it last year? Yeah, last year I got my first crop of asparagus. It was so, so good. There was only like five spears, but they were amazing. So I think that's everything that I'm growing vegetable wise. <gasps> and I did it in like 10 minutes. Um, like I said, if I'm going through this way too fast, then there will be a very detailed blog post. Do not worry. Um, so we'll just quickly talk about the fruit cage like usual nothing's changing in there i've got my four black currant bushes um, which are ben lomond i've got my two gooseberry which are hinonmaki green and then i've also got my row of raspberries which are autumn bliss i've just pruned everything so they are all ready to go i need to weed the fruit cage and just give it a good tidy um, and then growing up the side of the fruit cage is my grapevine, 
which again I've pruned and I've researched it this time and hopefully I've pruned it right. Um, that is three or four years old now. Um, I, I haven't got a crop from it yet. I know that it takes about five years to be able to get a crop from your grapevine, but um, it, it tends to grow really, really well. Um, the variety is Flame and it's a seedless red variety. I'm so desperate to try them. I love grapes. So that's the fruit cage area. Yeah, that's, I think we might as well just go on to the flowers now. And to the flower plants. Oh, and we'll talk about the second growing season in a minute. So let's talk about the flower patch. And again, I have drawn a pretty colored picture <laughs> in of how I see my flower patch looking this year. Um, this area is taking a few years to fully establish, um, but I just, I love how it looked last year. I just, I love sitting in the middle there with my deck chair and a cup of tea. It's nice, it, especially if you've got a few spare minutes, you can just sit there amongst the flowers. It's just, it's heaven. Um, so yeah, I drew my pretty picture and then I've also drawn my graph paper picture. So in here, it's mainly, mainly annuals, um, but there are a few perennials there and biennials. So I've got, let's start at this end. Um, walking into the flower patch, I have my mini lavender hedge. Um, so there's six lavenders planted there. I love lavender so, so much if you can't guess already by my name. <laughs> Um, there are alliums planted along the side of the trough. Um, two bunches of them are gigantium, which I grew um, last year. Yeah, I planted them out the year before. They were in bloom for the first time last year. Oh, I love them so much that I treated myself to six more. Um, this time they're the white variety called Mount Everest. Excited to see them grow. So we just go around the edge now. There's going to be quite a few giant sunflowers planted out along the edge. There's a established fennel, some verbena. There's going to be a row of foxgloves, which I've just planted out now. And also a row of hollyhocks because I want to create a sort of barrier, like a shelter from that corner. Um, so when I'm sat in my little paradise, <laughs> I don't have to look at anyone else, you know, on working on their allotment. So um, hopefully that's going to create a little bit of a barrier. In the far corner is my globe artichoke, which is looking really good. I don't want to jinx it. I've mulched it, um, but it's looking really good. And again, there will be more sunflowers in that corner. Um, there's another verbena, more sunflowers, a rosemary in that corner, another verbena. Um, and yeah that's around the outside. So they're all sort of perennials or biennials um, and they should come back every year. So we go on to the annuals now. So I've got some scabious. Actually, I might as well go through the varieties with you while I'm going through them. So there's scabious, three rows of scabious, stern kugel, which are my favorite I grow them every year now um, and the flowers are beautiful but the most stunning thing about them is the dried flower heads. Um, I love them so so much. So there's three rows of the Scabia Stern Kugel. There's also three rows of Yarrow. Again I'm going to use them as dried flowers. Four rows of Zinnia, Queen Lime with Blotch. Three rows of Scabious um the variety is fata morgana beautiful pink color four rows of cosmos dazzler then in front of the beehive storage bin there's going to be a row of calendula and i'm going to do the touch of red buff in the flower patch area four rows of dwarf sunflowers called sonia then there's going to be two, four, six rows of straw flowers. There's going to be three rows of the salmon rose. Where are they? 
and then three rows of the bright rose this year i really want to grow dried flowers um i just i love having them in the house throughout the winter uh, last year i picked some hydrangeas from wales and even though they're a little bit faded now they're still in a vase a year later and they just look really lovely um, and i enjoy hanging the dried flowers from my herb dryer last year so i'm trying to fit in some dried flowers hence the yarrow um, the straw flower and a few other ones which i haven't mentioned yet but yeah i just want to grow dried flowers this year amongst the other usual annuals um so next to the the six rows of straw flowers there's going to be the ami magus uh graceland again grew this for the first time last year absolutely loved it it was so beautiful then there's two rows of globe amaranth which is the qis series mixed again for the dried flowers two rows of cornflower the true wild form three rows of cosmos fizzy rose picote then there's going to be a dahlia calf oule then there's four rows of fever few which are still in the ground they're still doing okay another row of calendula in front of the apple tree trunk then another dahlia fairway spur and four rows of honesty uh, the honesty was a bit funny because i planted it out last year and nothing happened um, and then i realized that they're probably not going to flower until this year and they're looking really really good so i'm just leaving them to it and hopefully we're going to get some flowers this year um so yeah that's the flower patch i think it might be my favorite part of the allotment <laughs> uh, my dad always says I could just basically turn my allotment into a flower patch because he grows, you know, he grows a lot of vegetables and sometimes we are overrun with vegetables. Um, and I sometimes I think, oh, maybe I could just grow flowers. That would look quite nice. Um, but I quite like growing a little bit of everything. Oh, I've just noticed sweet peas. I haven't gone through the sweet peas with you. So I'm growing sweet peas on the archway. Um, growing two new varieties this year um, and I like it when you choose flowers or vegetables which have names that are a little bit sentimental to you um, and luckily the the names were nice and the actual sweet pea colorings were nice so I'm growing one called royal lavender which is obviously a lavender color and then the other one is called green fingers which is white with um, a purple edge I just really like the names. Ah, I'm seeing them blowing everywhere now. Uh, so yeah, they've been sown and they're just coming up now. I love sweet peas, love, love, love them. And also they match the color of the shed, which is quite nice. Um, I'm also growing a nasturtium in the brassica bed and it's a trailing variety. It's called Spitfire. Again, I really like the name. Um, so yeah, I think it grows to about four meters. So um, that would be great in the brassica bed as a companion plant. I'm also going to um, dot a few flowers around the vegetable beds. I like to do it every year, it's just, you know, to bring in the pollinators. Um, I totally forgot. I'm growing poppies. Poppies in between the alliums. I didn't put it on my plan, um, but uh, I got sent some giant poppy seeds from a lovely, lovely lady on Instagram. So I need to actually sow them now. I forgot to sow them. Um, but yeah, oh, again, I don't think I grow poppies for the flowers. I grow them for the flower heads. They're just so, so nice. Right, so that's the flower patch. Where are we going to now? The wildlife patch. I gave this a really good tidy yesterday. I'm so chuffed with how it looks. So there's the pretty picture of how I want it to look. Oh my God, it's getting really windy now. Um, and then I've also done the graph paper plan as well. So this area is mainly perennials. It's an area that I don't really want to touch much. I don't want to disturb it. It is purely for the wildlife and a little bit for me. 
So let's start at the Katie's Rose. I don't think it needs any more saying about it. It's always done amazingly well. Behind that is the Karoo Grass, which is purely there for the wildlife to shelter in. I've also just planted a clematis out in the far back corner. Um, that variety uh, is Clematis Montana Elizabeth. That's going to hopefully climb up the side of the shed and onto the roof. There's an anemone, which I can't remember the name of. Um, there's going to be a borage. There's Rubecchia. Circium Rivla Atropiparium is there as well. A really good one for the bees. If you're looking for a flower um, for the bees, that's a really, really good one. It has these beautiful thistle-like flowers and the bees just adore it. So that's there. There's also a lady's mantle next to that. Uh, then there's my grapevine, a borage, another anemone, a wild swan, which is white on the front and underneath is purple. It's so stunning. Um, and another lady's mantle. And then amongst all of them, there's just gonna be loads of calendula. And the variety is Indian Prince. Um, it's the orange variety. Again, I'm gonna leave some of these for the bees, but I'm also gonna pick some to make some beauty products with this year. Um, inside the pond is a water iris, which is blue flag. Um, and there's, well, there was a water forget-me-not, but it was so mashed up with grass um, that had grown in there that I decided to just replace it with a new one. So there's gonna be another water forget-me-not there, but that's a really good one for the pond. The frogs love hiding underneath it. Um, also, oh yeah, I spotted a newt in my pond yesterday as well because I took the water iris out to uh, deadhead it and, and cut it back a little bit and I saw a newt. I was so excited. Um, and there was a frog there as well. Sorry, I'm not getting excited about the frog anymore. Um, but I love frogs, I love frogs. They do scare me a little bit. But I was just so excited to see a newt. I'd never seen one before especially in my own pond so it was nice um so yeah oh there's going to be four um sunflowers along the back edge and they are going to be the soraya variety and um, they're a multi-branching tall variety of sunflower oh, sorry about the hand actions <laughs> again i just want to create that barrier along there and also it's food for the bees and there's also a bug hotel which i built yesterday as well so that is the pond area so down the pond down the flower patch what else do we need to talk about there are various things in containers like i just planted um three strawberries in a hanging basket by the wildlife patch um there's a few bulbs in containers there's a spearmint in a container there's a skull cap uh, there's a strawberry mint uh yeah there's quite a few containers dotted around <laughs> anything else that i've missed now talked about the trough didn't i i didn't tell you what was in the trough now Although I did go through, I'll just go through it again anyway. So in the trough now, in the, in the spring bulb trough, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, varieties of tulips. So there's two rows of artist, two rows of orange princess, two rows of purple crystal, two rows of evergreen, two rows of apricot bride, two rows of spring green, and two rows of la belle epoque. And then there are four rows of Narcissus. So two rows of Sir Winston Churchill, love the name. Two rows of Bell Song, two rows of Yellow Cheerfulness and two rows of Sweetness. Um, it's just full of tulips and, and Narcissus. It started off as a tulip trough, but it's now just a spring bulb trough uh, because I've got the Narcissus in there. Um, and like I said, they're just starting to pop up now. So that's really, really exciting. I think the last thing to go through now is just the second growing season. And it's something that I like to plan ahead with. Where is it? So quite, quite a few of the things that I grow in, in my vegetable beds get harvested quite early. Um, and I don't like seeing spare soil 
you know going to waste and like I said because my plot is so small um, I like to make the most of everything so I do a thing called a second growing season I've done this plan here on my graph paper so that's what I'm growing in there first and then this is what will replace them so when my potatoes come out because they're salad and first early varieties they'll probably be out by August so I'm going to sow some green manure in there just to give that a try I've never grown green manure before um, so I thought I would just give it a little go and see how it goes um, nothing's changing in the brassica bed um, they have quite a long growing period the brassicas so nothing's changing in there but in the legume slash other bed, um, everything's coming out. Everything's coming out, apart from the squash. So when this bed is done with, which should be by August again, I'm gonna sow two rows of turnips, three rows of Swiss chard, three rows of leek, leeks and then I'm going to replace the soya beans with bolotti beans um, when I say sow them I won't be sowing them then what I usually do is I sow them at home in the greenhouse so that as soon as the bed is free I can put in the nice healthy seedlings and they've got a bit of a head start there sometimes my second growing season works really really well sometimes it doesn't but what I always say is it's worth a try you know, you're never going to know if you don't try. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's worth a try. It's always worth a try. Um, let me just check that I've gone through everything now. Where's the main plan? Oh gosh, I, I just have too many plans, don't I? Right. Yeah, I've gone through everything. yeah that's it <laughs> that's the allotment for 2019 um oh, i'm so excited like i've had my allotment for five years every single year you still get excited and i think that's one of the great things about gardening you know every year is different you can change things you can try different things it's just i can hear a bee I saw a giant bumblebee yesterday. Oh, it made me so happy. Um, and I spotted a few butterflies as well. So, like I said, I do think spring is on the way. It is on the way. Um, what was I saying before that? Yeah, so excited for the year ahead. So excited. Um, but, like I said, I'm going to pop all of these plans on the blog with a full list of the seeds that I'm growing um, I've got my seed organization down <laughs> I made these little dividers for it as well March is gonna be one busy month for sowing seeds but yeah every single thing will be on the blog um, and I hope you enjoy looking at the plans and and if you feel inspired to grow something the same as me then great <laughs> we can be in this journey together oh actually i just spotted some else that i've done spreadsheets because i'm a spreadsheet kind of girl i told you i take this way over the top so i write down these are the actual sewing ones so i do the spreadsheets of the vegetables i'm growing the variety the quantity I need, when they need to be sown indoors or sown outdoors, when they need to be planted out and when they need to be harvested. So I do that with the vegetables and with the flowers, the perennials when they need to be harvested and the second growing season. Just, I like, I like it. I love it. So I've also printed out these which are just um, guides really. So they've got um, all my flowers and all the vegetables um, with the varieties but I'm, there's a, um, a row there for me to write down, a column sorry, for me to write down when I sow them, 
when they germinate, when I pop them on, when I plant them out and when I actually harvest them because it's so handy to look back on. So, so handy. And another thing I do is I have a special diary which is just for the allotment. Um, I actually need to fill it in. Um, so whenever I come up the allotment, I write it in the diary and, you know, if I paint the gate, I say that I painted the gate. <laughs> um, but the most handy thing that it is for is when you plant things out or when you sow things. So I write down a list of when I've actually sown things, um, what the weather's like and just things like that. But it's just purely for the allotment. I think this was like a pound from the works. I also keep my allotment notebook. Sorry, I will stop in a minute. My allotment notebook, which um, I, well, I made it, but uh, you can change the notebook inside by just pulling it out. So this is the second notebook it's had in it. I write all my lists, things to do, things I need to buy, um, just everything goes into here. All my little thoughts, um, yeah, little drawings. <laughs> it's one of my like, most prized possessions. I always take it with me everywhere. Um, so yeah, that is my planning done and dusted. And like I said, I'm just so excited to see how the year turns out. Um, but the one thing we can't control is the weather. And if last year was anything to go by, then, you know, we just, we just can't control it. We can't control it. So again, it all depends on the weather. If we have a really, really hot summer again, you know you might not get a good potato harvest things might bolt it might just be terrible <laughs> but in our head and in our plans we have the best intentions and um yeah i'm excited to see what the year brings um yeah so go and check out the blog post if you want to know a bit more sorry if i rambled a bit too long um i'm gonna paint the shed quickly i <laughs> not paint the shed paint the gate that's because i haven't had a cup of tea yet because my stove the gas bottle still won't work um yeah i'm gonna paint the gate and then head home um but i really really hope you enjoyed going through my plans with me and well good luck for the year ahead i hope you will have a really really great growing season i will no doubt talk to you before then um but I just hope you'll have a really really good year and I hope you've been inspired by these plans and to try new things um, but yeah thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time mm -hmm.